The second leading cancer killer in the United States is colorectal cancer, and colonoscopy screening is controversial. Now on DrSaputo.com, we talk about many of the other screening tests for colon cancer, like um, colonoscopies and sigmoidoscopies and virtual CT colonoscopies and uh, Even barium enemas. Oh yeah, barium enemas and stools for occult blood. blood. <laughs> on this show, we're going to be talking and focusing more on sigmoidoscopies, which also seem to be controversial depending on who you talk to, like mm -hmm. whether you're talking to the United States uh, Preventative Task Forces who think it's controversial, and then the American Cancer Society that wants us to do the sigmoidoscopies. So when and why would you do a sigmoidoscopy as opposed to a colonoscopy? See, it depends on your point of view because there are conflicts of interest here. From the point of view of the patient, do as little as you can, please, if you're going to do that. And I'd rather have a short tube put up my rear end rather than a six-foot tube put up there. That's not stiff, that's right? flexible. <laughs> and I'd rather not have a problem uh, with uh, anesthesia and having to take a whole day off and to go through the cramps and all the stuff that goes with it and the prep. So the sigmoidoscopy is an easier test to do, and the question is, is the sigmoidoscopy going to give you an answer that you're looking for? So there was a study done in the New England Journal of Medicine in May of 2012 that basically looked at this, and what they did is they looked at 150,000 people, and they put 75,000 people in the treatment group, and the other 75,000 were in the control group. And those that were treated, they were all given a sigmoidoscopy and it was done at, at years three and year five, and, and that was what they did with that group. And the other group, as they did nothing, they had a comparative group. Then they looked over a 12-year period to see what the results were. And what they found is that there were 250 more can 252 more cancers and 89 more deaths okay, in the group that didn't have any screening. So there was value to it, but you have to keep in mind that there were 75,000 people in this group, so you're looking at numbers that are pretty small. And when you're looking at the risk, you'd have to do 750 sigmoidoscopies uh, to prevent one life. So that means 740... To prevent one life? To, to prevent one death. Excuse okay. me. <laughs> Good point. So that means 749 of those were done needlessly on people that didn't need it to save one life, and you'd have to do 500 just to find one cancer that would be uh, something that would change how you would approach uh, what you have with your, what's going on with your health. Well, I guess it's worth it to the one person that you find. Definitely. But that's an awful lot of sigmoidoscopies to find one cancer. It is, but then you look at the fact that there are 50,000 deaths every year, and you say, well, can you prevent those deaths? And the answer, the answer is yes, you can, but then you have to go through this. So a lot of people are willing just to play roulette and say, I'll take my chances. If it's only one in 750, I'd rather not have it. And they're making a point, too, because if you're doing a procedure to somebody, uh, it's an invasion. Uh, it has complications to it. But it's also why a, a, a more simple approach, like the sigmoidoscopy, makes more sense to some people. Well, with the sigmoidoscopy, you don't have to have an anesthesia, and you can do it in the doctor's office. Oh, yeah. It's considerably cheaper. What's the difference in the rates between having a colonoscopy and yeah. a sigmoidoscopy? Well, you're looking at, if a nurse practitioner does it, maybe as little as $150. But doctors doing it in his office, it may be three, 300 or so dollars, maybe a little bit more. And the colonoscopy can cause anywhere from 1000 to 2500 even $3,000 dollars depending on where you're doing it so there is a big difference in what you do that matters to the person who's having it well the other thing too is a sigmoidoscopy focuses more in the lower part of the colon mm -hmm. but where are most of the colon cancers found that's where they are they're on the left side the descending colon and those that are on the right side are often missed by doing colonoscopies as well so it's not like you can't get away with doing a sigmoidoscopy. And the United States Preventive Services Task Force has looked at this. And keep in mind that that's a federal agency appointed by Congress. And they're, they agree that it's okay to do uh, testing by doing either fecal a blood uh, fecal blood, blood testing, uh, which is uh, now getting more sophisticated as we're getting DNA tests to kind of tell whether or not a cancer is there, uh, or doing a sigmoidoscopy every five years and fecal a blood uh, occult blood testing on alternate years, or doing a colonoscopy every ten years, and now they're saying that the sigmoidoscopy initially and a colonoscopy, if something abnormal is found, is a reasonable approach, and I tend to agree with that. 
course, then if you have something wrong with the sigmoidoscopy, and then you might end up having to have a colonoscopy anyway, so then you end up getting two. Right. And then what about false positives? Well, see, that leads to colonoscopies too, and you're looking at 15 or 20 percent of sigmoidoscopies that, that have false positives. So we're looking at something where we don't have all the answers. We'd like to know more about what's the best thing to do. And now that there's so much question about the colonoscopy as a primary thing to do, I think we need comparative studies. We need to do a clinical trial that has sigmoidoscopies in one arm, colonoscopies in another, maybe virtual colonoscopies in a third, and maybe looking at DNA testing for cancer as a fourth. And if we did that, then we'd have the answers that we're looking for. So we have some, we have a lot to, on our plate to think about. And during the time that we don't have all those answers, you pay your nickel and take your chances. It depends on who your doctor is. It depends on what organization uh, you want to listen to, whether it be the United States Preventive Services Task Force or looking at uh, Th that of the American Cancer Society, the American College of Gastroenterology. And it sounds like it might be better to hold off on having it until you have symptoms? Well, that's controversial, and I think most people would say no, but when you look at the numbers we talked about, you can make a case for it. So we need to do the trials, and once we have those trials, we can talk about it. And in the meantime, if you do have symptoms, obviously that's the time you really want to get aggressive and maybe even think about going straight to a colonoscopy because if you've got symptoms, you want to be sure you don't have a colon cancer or some other serious cause uh, of, of colon disease.